In this part of the presentation, we'll demonstrate the capabilities of some of our SAP Write tools. Okay, so we're back in Outrix Designer and the ACS for Outrix Designer has been installed. Um, and you'll see that we have a folder here for the SAP Write tools and the three Write tools currently available listed here. So the SAP IDOC tool, the SAP BW Write tool and the SAP BAPI Write tool. In terms of demonstration, I'll show you the SAP IDOC tool and the SAP BAPI Write tool working today. Okay, so um, I've got a workflow here that's going to make use of the SAP IDOC tool. Okay, and let me just walk you through the workflow uh, and then I'll show you data we have in uh, our source system, which is SAP ECC, and also show you the data in the target system, which is going to be an SAP S4 HANA system. And then we'll execute the workflow and I'll show you the data after the workflow has run. So the particular scenario is the migration of pricing condition records. So these are type of master data in SAP systems and they're common to both ECC and uh, s hana So this particular workflow is making use of our SAP table data tool. Um, and what we're doing here is we're extracting data from the, the source system Okay, so our source ECC system, and uh, we're pulling data from the, the main uh, pricing condition record header tables. Um, and then we're just doing some manipulation of the data in the top branch of this workflow here. I'll walk you through this shortly. And in the bottom branch of the workflow, we're taking the data extracted from this particular table here, and we're going to pass it as a dynamic input into a workflow wrapped within a macro, um, which is in the pool data from the item level table associated with this table here. We're then going to use an Outrix join tool to combine the data. Okay, and that's basically the extract process. So not too complicated. And then in the preparation phase of this workflow, what we're going to do is we're going to format the data uh, or structure the data in a format that be, can be consumed uh, by the IDOC being used by this particular workflow. Okay, so it's all about preparation, could be cleansing for a more complicated workflow. And then finally, in the load phase, we have our SAP IDOC tool itself. So what we'll do is, let me just set up, set up the example. So what we're going to do then is we're taking data for a particular price um, from an SAP ECC system. Right. And what we have here, there's a whole range of prices, but I've just isolated this for one, one material. So this is a transaction called VK12. There's VK11, VK12, and VK13, uh, which are very commonly used T-codes within SAP systems to create, display, maintain uh, pricing condition records. So what we have here is a price for a product called ACS001, and that's currently $2,999 US dollars uh, per unit. Um, it's been created in a condition type called PR00 and it's been created for a sales organization 3020 <coughs> distribution channel 10. So this is my source system. My target system is colored blue. This is an s hana system. Um, and you can see here uh, in this particular system, we have a different condition type we're using called PPR0. The sales organization is also different. So in that new design, we've, we've restructured uh, our, our sales organizations. The material name is the same. And currently, the price for this product is also 2999 OK, so let me first change this price here. And let's make it something simple. Let's make it 150 uh, US dollars. I'll save that change. OK, great. So let me come to my workflow now. So let me just run the workflow and we'll let that take its course. So we're extracting data from that source system, the pricing data. And through this process here, we're effectively reconstructing our pricing condition record because we're pulling data from the most important header level table and the most important item level table. Okay, these can be more complicated, of course, but this provides a nice, simple uh, type of example. All right. Okay, we're now going through the preparation phase and it's processed. So let me take a look at my SAP 
target system. And let's just execute that. And you can see the price has been updated to 150. So successfully transferred a price from an SAP ECC system to an SAP s hana system. Uh, the pricing condition types are different and the sales organizations associated with it in that target system are different as well. So let's take a look at what's done here in a little more detail. So the extract hopefully is quite is reasonably clear. I'm pulling particular pricing data from my uh, source system here. On the top strand, or top branch rather, I'm using this regex tool. The reason for doing this is that in this particular table in SAP, uh, the data, the combination of, in this case, the sales organization, distribution channel and product have been concatenated. And I'm just using the regex tool here to split those out into the individual fields because that, these are the fields I'd like to work with. Okay. The output through the macro process is <coughs> the condition record itself, the condition type we extracted data from and the value. So here you see the 150 there. And then we simply use the Altrix join tool to join on the common keys, which is the condition record number. Okay. Now I mentioned earlier that the settings in the, the source system target system are slightly different. There's a different sales organization, there's a different pricing condition. So what we're just doing here again is just using some standard Altrix tools um, to do some basic transformation of that data. So I'm mapping a sales organization of 3020 to 1710. I'm changing a condition type of PR00 to PPR0. So basically uh, some basic settings here to get the data into a format that we can work with. And then in the IDOC tool itself, this is where a lot of the, the magic is happening. So let me open this up a little bit so we can see it. So I'm able to search for any, any IDOCs you have available in that particular uh, system. So the system I've selected as IDOC from is the s for hana uh, system. Um, once I've identified the particular type of IDOC I want to use, all the metadata associated with IDOC is retrieved and displayed for me here. And the way that IDOCs are structured is they're structured according to what are called segments. And these segments uh, may often be embedded in each other, so quite hierarchical. So a particular IDOC may comprise multiple segments. Okay, so we need to be able to identify those segments that are important to us uh, in one step. And in the second step, we need to make sure that the data we're providing through the earlier parts of the workflow will map to that particular each segment we need. So here I have my I have three segments that I'm using and therefore I'm doing three preparations of that particular data. Yeah, it's one here. Oops one here and one here. Okay, so this is a format that would be con consumed by the uh, IDOC tool. Um, if our naming conventions align, so if I'm using the same field names through my workflow as are required by the IDOC, then what we're able to do here is use this automap function and then the fields will automatically be mapped to the appropriate uh, field IDOC field name. Okay, so essentially we provide the IDOC the data and the structure that's required and then it can successfully process it. So using these reasonably simple workflow here, I'm able to pull data from my source system. Using Altrix capability, I'm able to manipulate, cleanse, transform that data. And you, then using our uh, SAP write capability, we're then able to load that data into the target SAP system all through one workflow. Okay, so that's IDOC. Um, and one final example here is uh, making use of BAPI. So again, this is quite a common use case. A lot of our customers are talking to us about at the moment. And what we want to do here in this particular scenario, I, well, I'm posting GL account documents, but it could be sales documents. I could be modifying material master records. Um, I could be setting flags on um, on, on sales orders and so on and so forth. So there's an awful lot of scope in terms of what we can do. So this particular uh, workflow, what this will do is it will take data being provided from a particular source and using that data, it'll generate financial postings in the SAP uh, target system. So we're using 
again, a macro approach here. And the reason we're using it in this particular case is that some BAPIs uh, that are used with an SAP allow me to process one transaction at a time. So I can post one GL document at a time. So by using the macro concept with an Alteryx, what I can do is I can feed many multiple documents into the workflow and have each transaction process one at a time. So from my perspective, I'm just providing a load of documents I want to have loaded into SAP. Okay, but mechanically behind the scenes, we're sort of processing them in, in, in a sequence. So what we have here then is uh, we have a series of input files. Okay, all right, so you can sort of see the data I'm providing here, uh, here, and here. All right, so document header, uh, account details, and currency information. And I'm feeding that into this particular uh, macro. Now the macro itself, if I just find it here, is where kind of the hard work is taking place. So I'm taking those, those inputs from the previous workflow and I'm using our BAPI tool to identify the BAPI I want to work with. And then in a similar way to the IDOC, I need to provide the data in the format, the streams or table levels that uh, can be consumed by the particular BAPI. Um, and it's not terribly onerous to run this with you, it's just a case of getting the pattern for a given, uh, given BAPI. So here we can see for the document header input, which is this first one here, we're passing these fields. Uh, for the, uh, let me see, for the currency, we're passing these fields and so on and so forth. Okay, so we have mapping for each of these. Now, when the workflows run, a couple of things will happen. So the, the BAPI uh, will be executed. The data we fed through the BAPI into the SAP system um, will get a uh, and we'll get a return message coming back from SAP to say whether it's successful or not. So here we're using our BAPI uh, pass tool um, to retrieve any uh, success messages or warning messages or error messages potentially retrieved from the SAP system. So let's go back to the original workflow. Okay. All right. So once the workflow is run, those outputs are being passed to us. So I can see I have a whole range of success messages here. And again, with finance, this is one of those areas where the, the actual success message um, isn't overly helpful the first time you look at it. So. Uh, here, I'm just using the Altrix Regex tool to convert the message I'm getting back from the SAP system into a financial posting document number, company code, and fiscal year. Now, the scope for this particular tool is absolutely massive. Yeah, um, um, having spoken to customers who are trying this and utilizing this tool at the moment, they keep saying, you know, you're only really only limited by your own imaginations as to what you can automate. Uh, with Altrix and the DVW ACS.